With a 4-0 record, Western Michigan is knocking on the door of the program's first MAC championship appearance since 2016. The Broncos have been led by an explosive offense featuring the talents of quarterback Caleb Ellaby and dynamic wide receiver Dwayne Eskridge. Standing in the way of a trip to Detroit are two regular season games, including today's matchup with Eastern Michigan. We'll preview all the action up next on the Western Michigan Football Pregame Show. And we welcome you inside Waldo Stadium where today it's senior day as the Broncos host the Eastern Michigan Eagles in the final regular season home game of 2020. Alongside Western Michigan's all-time leading passer, Zach Terrell. Connor Klingon here with you. And Zach, senior day, always a special day for these players. Yeah, a special day, an opportunity to get to play one last time in Waldo Stadium. It's a special moment for these seniors. Obviously, um, Waldo isn't going to be what they had hoped, but the getting the opportunity to play this season and one last time, and with a Michigan MAC trophy on the line and an opportunity to continue to progress towards the MAC championship, I'm sure these players are going to be ready to play and excited to play for their seniors. And we certainly wish that the fans could be here at Waldo Stadium, but still definitely an emotional and important day for these seniors. And as you mentioned, Zach, an important one is we take a look at the MAC standings. Western Michigan still atop the Western Division. Interestingly, Buffalo has now clinched the East due to some cancellations due to COVID-19 protocol. So Buffalo is waiting in Detroit. And the Broncos, if they win today and Ball State loses at Central Michigan, Western Michigan would clinch a trip to Detroit. Yeah, and if I'm with the Broncos, I'm focusing on ourselves. You know, they have a clear set path to the MAC championship. They control their destiny. They need to take it one week at a time, and that starts today with Eastern Michigan. They have a tremendous opportunity to set themselves up to get to Detroit. And um, obviously, Buffalo's there waiting for them, but Western has to take it one week at a time. Ball State, that's not going to be, shouldn't be anywhere in the minds of the Western Michigan Bronco players today. And if Ball State is able to win against Central Michigan today, that would set up a winner-take-all matchup next week, regardless of the results today in Kalamazoo. But obviously, the Broncos want to get a clean sweep on that Michigan MAC trophy and get a win against their rivals from Eastern Michigan. Well, the Broncos are 4-0, and they are that way because of their win last week against Northern Illinois. And this was a pretty close one, Zach. The Northern Illinois offense played some great ball control. Essentially, the offense was playing defense, keeping the ball away from Western Michigan. Yeah, Northern did a great job of their recipe to play against Western was perfect for them the situation coming in obviously they had a they've had a tough go of it um, throughout this season but running the ball keeping the ball out of Caleb Elby's hands minimizing big plays for Western is how they kept that game in check and they kept it close and it really went right down to the wire Western's gonna have to do a much better job tonight coming out hitting them right in the mouth keep getting um, three and outs keeping the ball in their own hands honestly and controlling the ball themselves uh, Northern set a great recipe for teams just like Eastern Michigan and ways to keep the ball out of our offensive hands and keep the game close. Well, in that fourth quarter, Northern Illinois had a 27-20 lead, and Caleb Ellaby led two really important drives. The Broncos were trailing 27-20, a 79-yard drive capped off by a 26-yard touchdown pass, and then later on leading a field goal drive where Gavin Petty made the game-winning kick for Western Michigan to come away with a 30 to 27 victory. As we take a look at the stats from this one, once again, D. Eskridge, fantastic, had the 134 yards receiving, but also a 100 yard kickoff return. Yeah, he's truly been the MVP of this season for the Broncos. I think his kick return really gave them the shot in the arm that they needed. At that point, they were down, and he really put the team on his back in a tremendous return. Also, had a great game in the receiving game. And then, like you said, Caleb Ellaby, he almost seems like he's more comfortable with the game on the line in the fourth quarter, which is a, um, shows, says a lot about him and his poise um, leading this offense. So our defense is going to have to play a lot better. 
that's what I see there on the stats. Northern Illinois did a great job, time of possession. They ran the ball efficiently, and they also um, did a great job of continuing to progress the ball down the field and score touchdowns. So our defense is going to have to play better versus Eastern, but um, they got that opportunity to respond after last week. And despite the fact that the defense allowed Northern Illinois to have those 40 minutes of possession, a key stop in the fourth quarter, Ryan Seelig coming up with a big sack, and the Broncos able to hold on for the 30-27 to victory last week. Well, coming up next, we had a chance to sit down with Western Michigan legend, Tim Hiller. What is smart? Book smarts, street smarts, IQ, EQ. Smart is her, it's him. They're in pursuit of purpose. Smart is knowing failure is success in progress. It's finding your calling. It's choosing your place to become. So, what kind of smart are you? Are you ready? Ready to go? Are you ready? Ready for more? Are you ready? Hi, I'm Jim Vandenberg at Maple Hill Volkswagen. This is the all new Cross Sport and Passat. All Volkswagens have 0% for 72. Stop in and see us at West Main and 131 or online at maplehillauto.com. Hi, my name is Abby Vandenberg with Maple Hill Subaru, and this is the 2021 Subaru Forester, starting at just $24,795. Subaru is one of the most awarded brands on the market, so no matter which model, you're always choosing a winner. Maple Hill Subaru, for a journey like no other. Get more pep for your wallet at Arbor Financial Credit Union. When you bank with Arbor, you can earn more like 3% more by simply using your debit card. And there are over 37,000 free ATMs for you to use, no surprise fees, and convenient access to your money with mobile banking. Now that's more. Find out how much more you can earn with Arbor Financial's free Momentum checking account. Visit a branch today or go to morewitharbor.org. Hi, I'm Jim Vandenberg at Maple Hill Auto Group. We are so excited to be back open. We have great programs and a large selection of cars to choose from. Shop us online at maplehillauto.com or West Main at 131 Kalamazoo. I'm back. Hyundai is offering employee pricing for Michigan residents only. No haggle, no hassle, just the lowest price. Hyundai, the brand that gives you America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. Maple Hill for a value like no other. Get more mileage with an auto loan from Arbor Financial Credit Union. Low rates along with easy and fast approvals from Arbor Financial put you in the driver's seat. You can call or apply online and have your answer in minutes. Right now, Arbor Financial is offering auto loans as low as 1.49% APR on new or used vehicles. Plus, make no payments for 90 days. Get rolling and get more at morewitharbor.org. What is smart? Book smarts, street smarts, IQ, EQ, smart is her, it's him. They're in pursuit of purpose. Smart is knowing failure is success in progress. It's finding your calling. It's choosing your place to become. So, what kind of smart are you? Are you Welcome back inside Waldo Stadium, where we're getting ready for the Broncos to host Eastern Michigan coming up at 2 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Connor Kling and Zach Terrell here with you. And before Zach broke the all-time passing record at Western Michigan, Tim Hiller was the man who held that title, had a fantastic career here at Western Michigan, and we had a chance to sit down with him. We're happy to be joined now by former Western Michigan quarterback and Werfel Trophy Award winner, Tim Hiller. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, it's my pleasure, Connor. Thanks for having me today. Well, Tim, you had a fantastic career at Western Michigan. Obviously, you left the school as the all-time leading passer before my co-host, Zach Terrell, took that one away from you a few years ago. Uh, but when you think back to your career at Western Michigan, what really stands out to you the most? You know, I think it's always relationships. I mean, coming out of high school, I had an injury my senior year and a lot of the recruiting options changed and didn't know a lot about WMU. And, you know, Bill Cubitt afforded me an opportunity when a lot of other schools didn't. And I just had a tremendous experience. The people you meet, the coaches you play for. Um, it's really gratifying now to see Tim Lester 
Jake Moreland and others of the staff um, that are succeeding that I had the opportunity to play for way back when. And those are guys that, you know, you keep in touch with over the years. I remember Tim Lester sending Christmas cards to my parents, you know, years after I was gone from Western and they'd have the Syracuse, you know, return address or the, you know, West Lafayette, Indiana return address. And it's really special to have a relationship like that with a coach or other players that, you know, stays with you far beyond your time at the university. Well, that's certainly been the case with so many Western Michigan players and former players talking about the community with this program. And you mentioned the injury you suffered in high school and also uh, early on in your career at Western Michigan. How were you able to overcome uh, that adversity that you faced in your career? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, first and foremost, I think um, adversity shapes character. And I wouldn't be who I am today as a a father, as a husband, uh, as a leader, if it weren't for those opportunities. I think I learned quickly that if I didn't um, conduct myself in the right manner, that I could lose the team. And so it was important for me to handle myself the right way when others were watching, because ultimately that example and that shadow I cast was what I think earned leadership the following three, four years coming out uh, of that injury and that recovery. And, you know, really for me, I mean, faith was a big anchor. You know, uh, my faith in God was critical. Uh, My teammates supporting me was critical. Uh, The medical staff, there's so many people around you that kind of, you know, held up your arms and kind of kept you going on days when you didn't know if you could. Um, but ultimately, those are experiences even today that I, I go and, and look back upon and um, see the benefit of the, the character and the strength that come through, you know, doing hard things like overcoming an injury. Well, last week, we talked to Western Michigan current starting quarterback, Caleb Ellaby, and he redshirted last season, not due to an injury, but he talked a lot about what he was able to gain from that year. You yourself in having that year where you were injured and just able to watch from the sidelines, how does that benefit you as a quarterback? You know, if you, if you would have asked me when I was 18, 19 years old, I would have said, this is terrible. But looking back now, that developmental year was the best thing possible. And I would do it over again, quite frankly. I think at the quarterback position, with all the things you're juggling mentally, let alone just the age of these guys, you, you have to remember they're, they're developing, they're coming into their bodies, getting stronger in the weight room. You know, they're on a regiment where they're lifting year round with the strength staff. That opportunity, both physically and mentally, for Caleb to step back. I mean, look at his, you know, what we're going to see yet today, this afternoon. Look at his development this season, how efficient he is, how well he's throwing the ball. All those things are a product of that year of extra maturity. It really helps the game slow down, helps him grow as a leader, and I think it's great. I know for me personally, it was huge in my development and growth as a player. And and you mentioned the development that he had he's had a tremendous season helping Western Michigan to this 4-0 start. What has impressed you the most about his play this year? You know, that there are so many things, but I think it starts with efficiency. Uh, you look at his completion percentage week in and week out, as well as just taking care of the football. He's managing the game really well, and the run game is phenomenal, and so that gives him the opportunity to take a shot. And I don't know what their percentage is with, you know, throws over 20 yards, but it has to be high. You know, normally that's a low percentage throw when you're throwing the ball 20, 25, 30 yards downfield. And yet we're completing those balls almost routinely every week. And that's aided by the run game, but that's also him. That's his accuracy. That's timing. That's the work that he and D. Eskridge and Sky Moore and others have put in. It's really impressive how they're throwing the ball well down the field. Last thing I'll get you out here on, Tim. Do you have a prediction for today's game? Oh, I'm excited to watch today. You know, when you look at the stat line a little bit, Eastern has struggled defensively. They're dangerous, though. I mean, they circle this game on the calendar. If you think about the – Michigan MAC championship. I mean, Western tends to always put the circle on Central, but Eastern puts the circle on us. And so we've got to come ready to play and come out quickly. Um, defensively, they've struggled a little bit. Our offense is looking really well. I expect us to run the ball well again. And so uh, if, if you want me to put a score on it, I think we'll hang at least 41 points here. So I'll, I'll give it uh, 41 21. How about that? 41 21. Broncos get it done again, and, and the offense does it big. Well, we certainly hope that uh, Western Michigan can put on a performance like that. Tim, thank you so much for the time. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, Tim Hiller, one of the all-time greats here at Western Michigan, and we really appreciate him joining us here on the pregame show. Zach, when you played quarterback here, what was some of the best advice he was able to give you? Yeah, so Tim Hiller was one of the first people that I sought out when I came to Western. And uh, sitting down with him, it was very apparent uh, what he did for not only Western, but the community at large. And his advice was really, you know, give back. 
get involved and how can you make this place a better place than when you found it? And um, he set the standard truly for quarterbacks and really student athletes at Western Michigan, not only on the field, but off the field and in the classroom. And I think he set a standard that has hopefully led a blueprint for me to follow and then Wasink and now Ellaby and um, all athletes from all different sports. So um, he's a tremendous leader for our, our university and our community. And I can't say enough about him and setting the standard and, and helping others along the way, just like me. Certainly a great representative of Western Michigan University. Well, it's been a great legacy of quarterbacks for the Broncos, but also wide receivers. Tim Hiller played with Greg Jennings. You had the chance to play with Corey Davis. And now Dwayne Eskridge has been one of the most exciting players in the MAC, and he certainly showed that off last week with an 100-yard kickoff return touchdown. Kick this one deep. Eskridge will take it a yard deep. He's coming out. D to the 5, out to the 10, to the 15, middle return to the 20. D. Eskridge out across the 25. He's going to take it to the house. They won't catch him. It's a foot race, and it is over. D. Eskridge, 100 yards to the end zone for a touchdown. And the Broncos regain the lead. Let's break down this play. Let's stop the ball. Let's stop it right there. So uh, special teams here. Think of the kick return as in waves, okay? So in special in the kick return game, we have three waves. We have the front line, middle line, and then back line, right? As you can see, as this play is forming, they've got a kick return right as they keep moving. And as Dwayne catches the ball, stop right there. So look at that second wave as they're forming that wall and that shield on that right-hand side, getting ready to form it for Dwayne Askridge. He let it run just a little bit further. And then stop right there. As you can see on the bottom of your screen, we're allowing Central Michigan to kind of play themselves out of the play. You got three to four guys to the bottom of your screen that are going to be a non-factor. You've got your wall set up towards the top there to screen them off. You have that one free middle guy that has to solidify that wall as well. And then you have the guy in front of D. Go ahead and let it run. Because of D's speed, he's going to be able to outrun those, those defenders to the outside. Pause. If you could roll it back just a little bit, just rewind just a touch. So this is the biggest play of this whole entire thing. So D's speed allows him to break this tackle right here because we let all those free defenders at the bottom of your screen earlier like I showed you. The wall has been solidified. The whole right side sealed off. That player right in the middle, right in front of D is, is solid, right? So D has to make one guy miss. In every kick return, there's one guy you have to make miss. This is the key to opening up this play. You can go ahead and let it run. D does a great job of just blowing by him. Also avoids this arm tackle. You never want to get tackled by the kicker. If you're a returner, you'll never hear the end of it. And then if you look in the dictionary, you look up speed, that's where you'd find Dwayne, a picture of Dwayne Eskridge because he does the rest right there. And a great kick return, a great job by the return team. And as we get to see another angle, we're just going to let this one run because this is just a thing of beauty. Like I said, that wall forms to the right. It's a kick return right. D does a great job of cutting it back, making that first miss, not getting tackled by the kicker. And like I said, he does the rest. He shows his speed and why he's one of the most electric players in college football. Well, it's not just the speed, Zach. How about his decision making on that play to be able to find those holes and the vision that he had? Yeah, the one to the cut to get across the to get across the field there um, is critical, especially because you know it's set up to go right, but not just using his vision, using his awareness, and just he's a special player and he shows that in that play. Well, he's been a dynamic kick returner, an outstanding wide receiver as well, and the Broncos are hoping he can have an impact once again today. Coming up next, we'll preview today's matchup with Eastern Michigan. What is smart? Book smarts, street smarts, IQ, EQ. Smart is her, it's him. They're in pursuit of purpose. Smart is knowing failure is success in progress. It's finding your calling. It's choosing your place to become. So, what kind of smart are you? Hi, I'm Jim Vandenberg at Maple Hill Volkswagen. This is the all new Cross Sport and Passat. All Volkswagens have 0% for 72. Stop in and see us at West Main and 131 or online at maplehillauto.com. Hi, my name is Abby Vandenberg with Maple Hill Subaru, and this is the 2021 Subaru Forester, starting at just $24,795. Subaru is one of the most awarded brands on the market, so no matter which model, you're always choosing a winner. Maple Hill Subaru, for a journey like no other. You found the perfect home. 
Arbor Financial Credit Union has the perfect mortgage. Arbor Financial has helped thousands of people get into the home of their dreams with little to no money down mortgage options, conventional fixed rate mortgages, construction loans, and more. Your mortgage with Arbor Financial is locally serviced, so you'll get an easy approval process, great rates, and low closing costs, plus a team of specialists to help every step of the way. Find out more at morewitharbor.org. Hi, I'm Jim Vandenberg of Maple Hill Auto Group. We are so excited to be back open. We have great programs and a large selection of cars to choose from. Shop us online at maplehillauto.com or West Main at 131 Kalamazoo. I'm back. Hyundai is offering employee pricing for Michigan residents only. No haggle, no hassle, just the lowest price. Hyundai, the brand that gives you America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. Maple Hill, for a value like no other. When it comes to your mortgage, sometimes less is more at Arbor Financial Credit Union. When you refinance with Arbor Financial, you could lower your monthly payments, leaving you with more cash on hand every month. You could reduce the term of your mortgage, so you'll be done paying off the loan in less time. And paying less interest means you get more out of your home's value. Arbor Financial Credit Union makes refinancing your current mortgage simple and easy with ultra-low refi rates. Find out more at morewitharbor.org. What is smart? Book smarts, street smarts, IQ, EQ. Smart is her, it's him. They're in pursuit of purpose. Smart is knowing failure is success in progress. It's finding your calling. It's choosing your place to become. So, what kind of smart are you? Got daylight right up the middle, inside the 20 to the 15, broke a tackle, he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Western Michigan. Eskridge will take it. They won't catch him. It's a foot race, and it is over. D. Eskridge, 100 yards. Welcome back inside Waldo Stadium, where we're getting ready for today's matchup between Eastern Michigan and Western Michigan, the 2020 home finale. And Zach, Eastern Michigan, bit of a rivalry as the Broncos try to get a clean sweep and win the Michigan MAC trophy. Yeah, Eastern Michigan is always a difficult game, um, especially with how well coached they are. Like I've said before, Coach Creighton is one of the best coaches in the MAC. I have a lot of respect for him. I know Coach Lesser does as well. So he'll have, he'll have his team ready to play. This has a lot of implications, like you said, the Michigan MAC trophy, but also recruiting. I mean, in the state of Michigan, a lot of Eastern and Western, we recruit a lot of the same people. So um, this has a lot of implications. And of course, Western one game closer to getting to their destiny of the Michigan Mac or the the Mac championship game. And Eastern Michigan at 0 and 4. But Zach, we were talking a little bit before the the record doesn't really tell the full story with this team. No, it really doesn't. If you look at the stats and look at the games, they've had a lot of close games, and um, they've definitely been. Uh, they have very similar statistics to us. You look at the offense; uh, they are averaging about the same amount of uh, yards passing. So they've had a, l a lot of close games, a lot of close calls. And if you kind of go into our keys of the game for this, I mean, a lot of that's got to come into play. The first key, though, is something that Eastern hasn't done well, and that's a stat the run. So Eastern Michigan really needs to do a better job of controlling the clock. That's what Northern was able to do. Like I said, they set that recipe for how to keep the game close. Um, Eastern's going to have to do a much better job of that, something that they haven't done well. Um, but they're definitely going to have to do that. Second is first turnovers. Western's done a great job of not turning the ball over. They're plus two in the turnover margin. Our defense is going to have to do a better job of that because Eastern has been prone to turn the ball over. Hutchinson has done that in this past few games. And in order for us to be successful and get the ball back in our offense's hands, our defense is going to have to do that. And then own the red zone. Eastern Michigan doesn't have a great uh, defense de uh, st statistically, but in the red zone, they are very stingy. Um, what Western is going to have to be efficient in the red zone, and our defense is going to have to do the same, keep them out of the end zone. So um, those are our keys to the game. Those are going to be vital in order to for Western and Eastern to, s to see who the ultimate winner is in this game. 
Well, you mentioned the turnovers. This Eastern Michigan team, although they've struggled with turning the balls o ball over themselves, they have turned uh, forced eight turnovers defensively this season. So that's something that we'll have to watch out for for this Broncos offense. As we take a look at our players to watch for this afternoon, for Eastern Michigan, their offense begins and ends with starting quarterback Preston Hutchinson. Yeah, he is their offense. Um, he is their leading rusher, obviously their leading passer. You'll look that his statist statistics for the season are very similar to Caleb Ellaby's and what his per game performance has been. Like I said, he's turned the ball over a little bit. Um, he came in last year and kind of ruined the Broncos season uh, at a, a little bit of a surprise, but we'll be ready for him this year. But um, he's a great player, a lot of talent, and uh, Western definitely needs to be ready for him. Well, you mentioned his performance last season a career game for him against the Broncos, throwing for over 350 yards, had three touchdowns in leading the Eagles to a win over Western Michigan last season. So it'll be a tough challenge for this Broncos defense, but the question is, can Hutchinson get some support in the run game? Yeah, that's going to be the biggest key is can he get some support? I think their leading rusher, other than him, has 70 yards and no touchdowns on the season. So the whole offense runs through him. He's got to need to get support in order for them to maintain drives and keep the ball out of Western's uh, potent offense. And for Western Michigan, we've already mentioned him. We saw the 100-yard kickoff return last week. But Dwayne Eskridge, he's been really not just one of the most exciting players in the MAC, but the entire country. Yeah, he's also been consistent. I think each and every game he has truly performed. Um, last game, like I said, he gave him the shot in the arm with a 100-yard return for a touchdown. He's been consistent each and every week. Each defense keeps trying to key on him. And the true test of an elite player is no matter how many people they try to put on you and know how many defenses try to stop you, you keep coming out every single week and performing and providing big plays for your offense. That's the true uh, sign of an elite player, and Dwayne Eskridge is that. He has seven total touchdowns on the season. He's averaging over 28 yards per reception, so it really has just been an explosive player all season long, and Caleb Ellaby will look to get the ball to him once again today. And now let's get to our picks around the Mid-American Conference. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19 protocols, a couple games canceled today. Kent State, Miami, Ohio, Buffalo, and Ohio. As we take a look at our records on the season, I'm falling behind a little bit here, but but you and the crew have done a pretty nice job. Yeah, I thought you were going to breeze over that. I like to see that right now. <laughs> I'm going to try to separate myself from the crew a little bit today um, with our picks this week. And we'll get things started with Ball State and Central Michigan, an important game from Western's perspective because if Central Michigan's able to win and Western Michigan were able to win today, the Broncos would clinch an appearance in the MAC championship. Zach, who are you going with? Yeah, I'm going to go with Ball State in this one. Um, I think Central's starting quarterback's going to be out in this game. I think Ball State uh, really wants that opportunity against Western. And I'm going to see how I hope for it because I want to see that matchup. So I'm going to go with Ball State in this game. Despite uh, Richardson being out at quarterback for Central Michigan, I'm going to go with the Chippewas here. I think running back Kobe Lewis will have a nice day and uh, get the win for Central Michigan. And now for our crew pick, we'll go down to the field with Rick Place. For Bronco Staff Productions, we're going Ball State over Central. So Ball State there. So I'm going out on a limb there with picking Central Michigan, and I think I'm the only person that has picked Central Michigan this season on this show. It's <laughs> against everything in our being to pick Central. <laughs> so that's why we're going with Ball State, me and the crew. And next up, we'll take a look at Toledo heading out to DeKalb to take on Northern Illinois. The Huskies still winless on the year. Zach, who do you have in this one? I look for Toledo to bounce back in this one. A uh, tough loss last week, but I look them for them to back, bounce back. Too much talent, and I think that they're going to pull this one out. I'm going to go with the Rockets as well. I like running back Bryant Kovac to have a nice day and Toledo to get a win against Northern Illinois. And let's go back down to the field with Rick for our crew pick. The Broncos production staff is going Toledo over NIU because Chris Fish, one of the Bronco production staff, is a huge model rocket fan. Toledo across the board. So I think that ensures that Northern Illinois will probably end up winning <laughs> that's, that one. That's been the way that it's gone this year, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's always something. That it's an ominous sign. Next up, let's take a look at Bowling Green and Akron. Both of these teams winless on the season, trying to get their first one of 2020. Zach, who are you going with? I was hoping College Game Day was going to pick this game to go to it. Um, this is the most exciting game for me in my, uh, in my humble opinion. But I'm going to go with the Akron Zips in this one. I think that they pull this one out one of these team 
has to win. So I'm going to go with Akron. Well, I've got a good friend of mine, Nick Valdeseri, who's the director of player personnel at Bowling Green. So for his sake, I'm going to pick the Falcons to get their first win of the season. And now let's go down to the field with Rick for our crew pick. Bronco Productions producer Thomas Dells determined we had to go uh, Bowling Green over Akron because he's an avid bowler. All right, the crew's going with Bowling Green as well. I think that's the right pick there in this one. I disagree. I think Bowling Green <laughs> might be one of the worst teams in the MAC that I've ever seen. I said this last week, and I'm sticking to my guns again this week. Well, now let's get to the main event. Today's game here at Waldo Stadium, senior day for the Broncos as they take on Eastern Michigan. Zach, who, do you, who are you going with? Yeah, I'm going to go on the Broncos in this one. I look for the Broncos to come out and attack and strike early. I think if they, they need to get a strong lead right up front, force Eastern to put the ball through the air, force some turnovers. I think the Broncos come back after seeing last week. If they keep the game close, they put themselves at risk at losing. So I think they're going to come out, strike fast and often, and I look for the Broncos to separate themselves in the second half. Well, we spent a lot of time today talking about Caleb Ellaby and Dwayne Eskridge in this passing game, uh, but Eastern Michigan has really struggled stopping the run. They've given up over 250 yards per game on the ground, so I think Western Michigan will lean a little bit on the running game, a veteran offensive line, and I like the Broncos uh, to come away with a win in this one. And our crew? This one's obviously a no-brainer for us. We're going Western Michigan University over Eastern. Let's ride. No surprise there, and thank you so much, Rick, for joining us down on the field at Waldo Stadium. Western Michigan across the board, and hopefully the Broncos do come away with the win uh, to get to 5-0 and on the season. Zach, your final thoughts before this game? Yeah, I'm really excited to see how Western responds. I think last week Northern Illinois came and smacked them in the mouth. Um, that game was a lot closer than I think a lot of the experts figured it would be. But they need to be prepared. Uh, Creighton's going to have his team ready. Eastern Michigan, they've had a lot of close losses. And um, traditionally, this has been a very close game, no matter what the record is coming into it. So michigan Mac trophy on the line, that's always a goal every single year going into the season for the Broncos. And then, like I said, this is going to get them one step closer to where they're ultimately trying to get, and that's the Mac championship. And we certainly hope that Western Michigan can get there. We also want to congratulate all their seniors playing their final game today here at Waldo Stadium. Make sure to tune in at 2 Eastern on ESPN Plus as Western Michigan looks to move to 5-0. For Zach Terrell, Tim Hiller, and our entire crew, I'm Connor Klingen. Thank you for joining us, and go Broncos.